once again to kick back and space out as for the next 90 minutes we transport you back to the 50s and a planet on the brink in when worlds collide first to whet your appetites we dip back in time and find that the fictional modes of transport shown in tonight's main feature on off the strange are some of the real ones on display here in popular science <laughs> If you happen to see this trim little buggy zoom up and quickly swing into a tight parking spot, you'll be looking at a remarkable new car, the Davis three-wheeler. With four seated comfortably, it takes off. Streamlined as a plane is this unique creation with designer Gary Davis at the wheel. Built in Southern California, it logically incorporates several aircraft principles, such as adaptation of the tricycle landing gear system. A switch on the dashboard operates built-in hydraulic jacks and makes tire changing an exhilarating experience. The single front wheel explains the car's parking dexterity and keeps it on an even keel in the event of a blowout, even at a top speed of 115 miles an hour. There are no fenders, wrap-around steel bumpers protect removable body panels. This little chariot can really run you around in circles. What's the trouble, Gary? Uh-oh, a modern Frankenstein. And here's another streamlined marvel on wheels. It only needs a pair of wings to be at home in the sky. Formidable indeed is its nose. With riveted aluminum fuselage, entry hatch, and rugged empennage, it's wasting time on the ground. But being earthbound, the monster is trundled out onto the highway to frighten other motorists. If you're looking for a 1960 model, this may well be it. Somewhat less spectacular is this sporty new creation of Gordon Burig of Pennsylvania, designer of the famous Cord. Front fenders of laminated fiberglass turn with the wheels made of light magnesium. Body and removable top are of aluminum and plastic. In the cockpit, or rather the driver's compartment, Mr. Burig operates the controls, closely resembling those of a plane. Thus, aircraft methods are becoming increasingly popular in automotive science. Nineteen fifty-one. Now that was a good year for sci-fi films. It was the day the Earth stood still, and the year the Thing had everyone watching the skies. But when Oscar night rolled around, neither of these classics caught the special effects honors. That was left in tonight's offering, When Worlds Collide. The film is a roller coaster ride of cataclysmic proportions, with stunning visual effects and heavy biblical overtones. After a prologue by none other than God, the film kicks off with a nifty piece of maths and an alarming discovery. Calculations proved to be correct. It was a frightening discovery of all time. But no one will believe the professor until his sums have been checked by a giant sewing machine called the Differential Analyzer. <laughs> the upshot is that two new planets have been discovered on a collision course with Earth. You know what it would mean if the public had this information prematurely? They tried desperately to keep it from the newspapers. End of the world, just around the corner! And failed miserably. But fortunately, even in the 50s, the world was full of skeptics. Predicting the end of the world is an annual crackpot event in our society. Although some people take the news very badly and decide to go on a crash diet. I weigh as much as a couple of lambs, three dozen chickens, one healthy farmer. Fortunately for mankind, the science has come up with a cunning plan. With enough funds, labor and material, Dr. Fry believes that rocket ships can be built to fly to Zyra, which will be closest to us. So, they build a modern-day Noah's Ark to save the human race from total destruction. 20th century Noah's Ark, huh? <laughs> you may laugh, but I bet you'll be wanting a ticket when Doomsday comes around. Once the havoc is over, every mother's son remaining alive will try to get here and climb aboard our ship. It's when the end is finally nigh and the special effects go into overdrive that the film really comes into its own. Although it's somewhat hindered by an unnecessary love interest and lots of scientific twaddle, you really can't wait for the action to start. But when it does, it's well worth the wait as tidal waves flood New York and the rocket takes off in spectacular fashion to flee our doomed planet. In fact, it's hard to believe that the film is over 40 years old. The producer, George Powell, 
Hot from the Oscar-winning success of this film, went on to make the H.G. Wells classics War of the Whales and The Time Machine, where he perfected the effects showcased so spectacularly here in tonight's feature presentation, When Worlds Collide. And so the world ends. Until next week, when it's back in one piece, and invaders from Mars threaten idyllic family life as portrayed in the wonderful world of popular science. But please remember, an asteroid smashing into your planet is very rare. So don't have nightmares. Sleep tight. <laughs>